There's no end in sight to this Philadelphia heat wave. It'll be a hot, sticky afternoon at PPL Park in Chester, Pennsylvania as the Philadelphia Union return home. They will face Toronto FC. Kosic in goal, Logan Emery and Eckersley central defenders. Torsten Frings, Dunfield in the center of the midfield. Avila and Lamb flanking them. Philadelphia's Zach McMath in goal. Gabe Farban, Carlos, Amobi, and Shannon Williams in the back line. Brian, a little withdrawn in the center. Might expose them. You have to get wide. Spread the defense. We're underway. Philadelphia Union in the blue and gold. Toronto FC in red. When they met in May, it was Toronto winning it by a final count of one to nothing on a goal by Cooperman's in the 88th minute. He who hesitates, but that's where you have to have communication on the field. You can't see that. You should sense it's coming, but that call to, has to be made from behind. Makugo for Brian Carroll. Right up the middle. It was a nice idea, but it didn't get through. Here's Freddie Adu keeping it going. Step over. Another one. Another one. Freddie Adu. He walks in. Adu. Block. Rebound. He's got that. And that's blocked as well. That was vintage Freddie Adu. If you want to know what he could do, there it was. Montreal has recently signed Alessandro Nesta. They're playing today. Not sure if he'll make his debut or not. Just came on. Here is McInerney. Nice touch back. Pahoy cuts. Back to McInerney. Cutting inside. A terrific move. Save. Kosic is a big rebound. It was blocked. Oh, Jack McInerney. He looked like Freddie Adu with that move. Beautiful move. Beautiful ball by Pahoy. But he's hurt. Maybe injured. Jack down. We do not want to see this. Both guys were hurt. The goalkeeper, too. That's one of those collisions where you know that neither player are going to give anything. Jack plays it through. Kosic comes out strong. Those two games. Michael Farfan, McInerney. Brings it down cleanly on the right. Sends it inside. It's behind Gomez. He gets to it. The shot deflected. And Gomez has scored the Union lead. Now the leading goal scorer on the team with five. Ball played in, Michael Farfan again, Jack McInerney, another penetrating run. He's looking all the time, plays it back across, Eckersley's caught, and the deflection comes off Eckersley for the goal for Gomez. A little help from my friends. Oh yes, coaches, nothing you can do to try to regain his balance. Ball played in, played off Eckersley, nothing he could do. Second straight game, the Union have come out and scored that first goal. Kugo stepping through, finding McInerney, looking to switch it. Flag stays down, gave Farfan, trapped it nicely. Hook for the in the box. A new shot, and it's all for a new. It's 2 0 Union. a couple of minutes apart. Gabe Farfan sends Eddie ready through, plays it down to the goalkeeper's left-hand side. Eddie Freddy celebrating, having it go with the corner flag. This team hasn't trailed by a couple of goals since that loss is Sporting Kansas City, unbeaten since. In fact, they had a lead against Houston and then ended up tying it. Here's a do. Cross. Pahoy! Well, that would have made plays of the day on 6ABC, I would think, and other networks. One minute added on here. Pahoy could have put an exclamation point on this first half had he nailed that one better. And what a move and what a cross by Freddie. Gabe Farfan sent. Look at that little 360 spin move. One touch, immaculate. That's, that's a ball that has to be finished. Morgan to Frings, back to Ashton Morgan. Possession lost, Mahoy, look at this ball for McInerney. Kosic thought about coming out, then went back. McInerney cutting it back. More favorable passing angle for Mahoy. Big save, big rebound. Freddie Adu missed it open net. That was three to nothing. 
What an awful way for Toronto to start the second half. What? This is when Jack had already cut back, found a streaking Pahoy, a great save by Kosic off his line. And that's a ball that Freddie would like to have back again. Frings with a long ball up for Ryan Johnson. He brought it down off the chest. Johnson holds it. A strong player goes up against Valdez. Knocked him away. Across for Kuberman. Saved by McMath. Well, there's the danger of Kuberman's and Johnson as well. Could have been a 2-1 game. This is the ball played across. Kuberman's with a header. Perfectly positioned. Zach makes the save. Central part of the goal. But both defenders were there. Otherwise, Kuberman's would probably be able to head that down and make it much tougher for McMath. Michael Farfan and Carroll. Nice ball. Stretches the defense. Freddie Adu versus Jeremy Hall. Hooked it in front of him. Adu sending it in. Kosic. Did he touch it? Apparently not. It's a goal kick. There is very little movement in the center of the Toronto offense. If you think of the runs that Jack McInerney makes and how they expose, it's really difficult to build up wide, wide, wide. It's so predictable. Hoping up for Michael Farfan. There's the third goal. Hoping up scores it. Farfan plays it through, beautiful one-time finish into the far netting. Antoine Hopeno shows why he's always a threat when he comes off the bench. He's been there for the last few minutes. The ball still in play. Ryan Johnson sneaking through. Saved by the back. Movement shot cleared by Shannon Williams. Wow is all you could say. That should have been a goal for Toronto. Foot save by Zach. Looked like a hockey save more than a soccer save. And then Williams cleared it. Do you think they practiced that in training yesterday? No. Do you? I don't know. I'm not sure. Ryan Johnson battling through. Zach McMath with a foot save. Ball's played across. Off the goal line by Shannon. Zach goes up and cleans it up. Freddie Adu puts it in a space towards Hopano. That's a nice play by Daniel Henry. He's got the freshest legs now outside of Albright. That's going to do it. No stoppage time. That's a wise decision by Paul Ward. A 3-0 game. You don't need stoppage time in 90-plus temperatures. Great result for the Union. Those are two guys that are close to one another. John Hackworth and Paul Mariner, the coaches who have changed the fortunes of their teams.